Feel the force of his optic blast. Here's your look at the new Beast Kingdom Egg Attack Cyclops figure. The product code for this is EAA067. The X-Men Leader comes with a series of interchangeable face plates, as well as a ton of cool special effects. I can't wait to show you guys the cool stuff that comes included with this figure, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Before we do that, let's first figure out how tall Cyclops stands. I'm going to put the tape measure right to the very top of his head. Stopping it right there, you're looking at a figure that's 6.9, right there. 6.9, about 7 inches in height. So you can already tell I'm excited. Uh, switching that over to centimeters, because you know there's going to be somebody out there that wants to see this guy in centimeters. You're looking at 17.7 about about give or take 18 centimeters in height as i'm sure somebody else will ask me as well how does he look next to the wolverine the one of which we've already looked at in previous review the answer is they're about the same height i guess if you go by comic standards wolverine would be a little bit shorter but you know what in all honesty i'm, I'm not too bothered by the fact that they are the same height to one another Something as well that they do share, not only is their height, but they also share the fact that they wear fabric costumes, which I think elevates these collectibles even higher on the cool scale. The figure gets itself the same type of display base as the one that came included with Wolverine. The only thing that's different is the front. On the front, if you'll remember correctly, probably was just the previous review, Wolverine was featured on the front. Not quite a placard, but printed on the front of the display stand. The same X-Men motif and font was done also on the top there. So other than really just the name being changed for obvious reasons, the display stand is pretty much identical to the one that came included with Wolverine. It has a clear post, which as you can see, features Beast Kingdom down the side. This adjusts up and down, this rotates all the way around, and the waist section, this part right here, hinges open and closed. Uh, displaying the figure, now we did look at the special edition of Wolverine, which, if you remember, had the sentinel head, the big giant cool head. This one is just the standard release. I don't know if there was a special release of Cyclops. So probably when it comes to displaying these guys, maybe I'll put the Sentinel head to the side and then I'll put all the rest of the figures on their standard display stands here. Now comes the part where I get really excited because Cyclops comes with a cool ton of these neat optic effects. I'm gonna probably talk about that in a second. Let's first have a look at the figure. Ah, oh, somebody says, come on, you teased us with the optic effects. Okay, be patient, we'll get to that. First and foremost, let's look at his defaulted look. As I've already described, uh, much like the Wolverine, he comes uh, with his outfit, his body is encased in this fabric outfit. It sort of finishes off the figures rather nicely. I might have even said that when we had a look at the Wolverine figure. I just like that it completes the look. This could have also been done and successfully accomplished in plastic where everything was painted rather than covered very snugly, I might add, with this outfit. But I think actually this works best because it makes it feel like a, a higher level collectible. Not to say that these aren't higher end collectibles, but certainly finishing anything off in a real fabric outfit really does make this guy feel complete. You don't really see any of the joints I mean, you know that they're in there, and when you do move stuff, you can certainly see the impression that that joint leaves behind. 
but it's nice that you don't see any of the articulation points anywhere on the figure, really except for the hands and the feet for that matter, where when you start moving the feet back and forth, of course you start seeing a bit of a noticeable gap. But other than that, everything, like I said, is fully finished on Cyclops. This happens to be one of my all-time favorite looks for the leader of the X-Men, much to the same way that Wolverine was my favorite look. Uh, the classic sort of 90, 92 style uh, people have really gravitated towards. I'm really glad that they, when they opted to make optic blast uh, wielding Cyclops, I'm glad they actually went the route of doing like the 92, 90, early 90s design for him. So again, really appreciate that. The head sculpt is actually really quite good. He comes with a series of interchangeable mouth plates, all of which you can kind of mix and match to get that desired look that you want. You probably saw a little bit of that happening at the beginning of this review when I often do that kind of montage opener, different looks that you can have the character in. Uh, so again, this is sort of the defaulted look. The yellow banded the back, uh, against the backdrop of the blue outfit. The yellow and the blue, again, so classic, so iconic for the X-Men. They've gone in and they've dry brushed a dry wash of what seems to be like a black paint over top of it. In some areas, it does look a little on the busy, dirty side, but I guess they've done it in there just so that it brings out some of the details, kind of roughs it up a bit, because if not for that, it would be a very bright yellow. So they've done that a little bit on the leg bands, and equally so, they've also done that a bit in the feet there as well. So actually, you know what, before, I know I'm teasing again by this, let's go through his articulation, because I know most, if not all, this review is going to be probably focused on all the stuff he comes with. So his head hinges up and down considerably high, actually. So even if you wanted to have a neat effect with him shooting his optic blast into the sky, for some reason, if you wanted to, you could do that. He actually does have a double ball joint or a dumbbell ball joint attaching the head to the base of the neck. So you can move the head up, you can move the head down, you can tilt it back and forth, and you can rotate it all the way around. Shoulders hinge outward, and you can work them back and forth. It also has the shoulder blade crunch, where you can move those limbs back and forth. You can rotate the biceps. You can double hinge on the elbows, which certainly will come in handy when we look at one of his interchangeable hand options. The hand rotates all the way around. He has an upper torso ball joint happening. Split on the legs, forward and back. There's a swivel and the uh, top cut of the thigh there. Double hinge on the knee. And then a good, adequate, good, generous amount of posability, hinging back and forth on the ankle pivot and up and down and technically all the way around if you wanted to. So that is Cyclops. Now, now, now we get to the fun stuff. He comes with a series of interchangeable hands, probably not as much the fun stuff I was going to be talking about in a second, but he does come with a pair of closed fists. He comes with a pair of spread hands, if you want to get kind of the angry or gestured hands happening. He comes with a, uh, the optic blast visor activation fingers, which can be worked on either side, depending on which way you want to display the figure. Um, I usually, I think, would put it on this side, but you can put it on either side, depending on which way you want to do it. And if you want to change out those hands... This guy is so excited. Let's go ahead and grab, where is the thumbsies go in? There we go. Plug that into place. Make sure it's firmly planted in place. And because you do have that double hinge and the elbow working to your favor, you can successfully, seems so obvious, but you can get successful posing options displaying the figure with the fingers up to his visor. A good effect. All right. Now we're getting, like I said, now we're going to get to the good stuff. So he does come with some interchangeable mouth plates. Uh, obviously drastically different from the one that comes defaulted at packaging. He has a screaming mouth plate. And he also has a grimaced mouth plate. To get access to those, it's not quite like Wolverine's where you just like kind of pull to it. You actually instead have to take the visor off. Just take it off. Just hinge it. It actually tabs sort of nestles its way into that groove and then once that's done it sort of encompasses this area here where now you can get access to it unpeg that and then depending on which one you want to go with i'm going to go with this one for the time being the grimaced face sort of seems vacant until you put the visor back on and you've got this look right here kind of a angrier discouraged maybe is the best word to describe it sort of a cyclops now that lends itself well to the stuff that we're about to have a look at. The thing is though, 
uh, he comes with, like I said, a series of different optic blast effects. He comes with one where it's just sort of that shine, that little spark of blast still kind of on the corner of his visor. I like that it does have a translucent point to it where it starts sort of more relatively clear and gets more seemingly more ruby red as it gets closer to the visor. And then a slight variation to that, he also has sort of the one as he's finishing firing off his optic blast you know you've got that almost kind of smoke that's just kind of coming off steam and heat coming off from the visor portion he comes with those and again those are pretty cool now to get access to those you can't get your finger in here so what you have to do is pull the visor off once again and you have to get, kind of get your finger in there. If you have a tool, a tool certainly could come in handy. If you have also one of the ends of the, the optic blast, mind you, you have to be very careful because this is very thin plastic. Just pull that off like that. And it seems like everything else doesn't require you to do this. It's only when you, if you want this as your initial look, this is the only time where you really have to kind of get your finger back there to push it through. So from really that point on, you can put the visor back on. You don't have to worry about it too much. You just snap that back into place and now you're good to go. So let's say start with this one right here. This is the, again, that little bit, that little thing happening right there. Maybe the start or the final of his optic blast kind of projecting out from his visor. Love the look of that. And very carefully take that off. We can then cycle through to the next one. There's this one here. Sort of again, like it feels like it's the smoke, kind of the steam, the heat residual coming out from the optic blast. Probably I've said optic blast a thousand times already in this review. One of the other looks that you can go with then is this, the main, I guess the main beam. I wanted to really reluctantly, I didn't want to say optic blast again, but you can plug that into place and you got the beam projecting outward. Sort of love the fact that it is translucent plastic, once again, that they used for this. Now from here, you can do a couple of different other things. You can bring these into play. Now, both this starburst effect, and then also sort of this eyelash, it kind of looks like an eyelash, doesn't it? None of them seem, from what I can see, and even in the instructions, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be like a place specifically where it says this is how you connect it. So I think they actually just more so rest, rest against it. So, for example, if I take this one, I can slide this through. And like I said, it just sort of, get this little hair out of the way, sort of just rests. Like I said, it seems more friction forced than anything else. Uh, if you do jostle, it kind of bangs a little bit, but if it rests on the corners, it does kind of give you like that little bit of the excess energy peeking its way out from the top and the bottom. And then what we can do is take that off and you can go with, this was one of my personal favorites, this right here. Now there is a notch, you can probably see it, it's right there. What I thought was a groove that would sort of line itself up to it, but it doesn't really quite line up to it. Instead, you sort of just rest it on top of it and you get that look as well. Now, let's say we want to do the screaming, the yelling faceplate. We're gonna do everything. I just take the head off. Sometimes it's just a little bit easier to kind of get yourself going around this. Pull the faceplate off. Now we're gonna go with the yelling faceplate. Pop that into place. Pop the visor back into place like that. Sure it's fully snapped into place. Pop the head back on the ball joint. There we go. And then we can put in, once again, the full beam. That just sort of wedges itself in there. And maybe for final looks, we can just add that as the end. And again, really neat looking figure. Let's put the, let's put the optic blast finger activation at the very top there. And you've got yourself a pretty neat looking Cyclops, we can even like turn the head a little bit there as well. Angle the arm, beautiful. As much as I love Wolverine, let's move Cyclops over. We'll bring in Wolverine again. Kind of get his claws angled. As much as I thought the Wolverine was fantastic, there's something so much, uh, so much fun really I had 
uh, playing around with the Cyclops figure here. He's got a lot of interchangeable options, as he certainly should be. He has a lot of different ways that you can display him, so that's certainly the benefit. And while we looked at the special edition version of Wolverine, this I believe, again, is the standard release uh, Cyclops. Both pieces look fantastic. Uh, my personal favorite, though, of the two, I would say is likely Cyclops, though. Boy, I had a lot of fun playing and displaying the Cyclops Egg Attack action figure. It's got a lot of, like I said, interchangeable options, all of which you saw over the course of this review. For all the different interchangeable options that you have, you still, at the end of the day, want a fully posable version of Cyclops, and this one definitely does deliver on a slightly smaller scale. One thing that's the fun aspect of it is not only just the things that you can add to the Cyclops, but for the fact that he's almost this smaller, super stylized version of Cyclops, which fits perfectly well on the shelf. Uh, yes, even though I did like the Wolverine as much as I did, I had an absolute blast see what I did there, uh, having a look and playing around with the Cyclops figure here. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, some good news is both Wolverine and Cyclops that we looked at in this review are available now at your local comic book store and online stores. Uh, definitely check them out, and if you're a fan of the original 90s X-Men, clearly that these characters are based from, I think you definitely will be wanting to add these ones to your collection. Today we were having a look at the new Beast Kingdom. This was product code, by the way, EAA067. This was the X-Men's Cyclops Egg Attack Action figure. Really cool. Super cool. You guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Beast Kingdom reviews? Don't blame you. There's a whole playlist just for Beast Kingdom. And while you're at it, if you haven't done so already, you're new to this channel, come on in. Well, help, help yourself. I got sandwiches and lemonade galore. Help yourself sit down, sit on down and certainly enjoy these reviews as they're coming up. If you, if you are new to this channel, nothing wrong with that. Hit that little subscribe button down below. And while you're also at it, make sure you hit that bell notification too. Uh, more videos certainly will be coming soon, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.